Come open your mouth and declare your presence. His presence is heaven to us and all that we need. In Him we live, we move, and we have our being. One more time, your presence, your presence. Your presence. and give the Lord praise and bless him open your mouth and speak to him tell him how much you love him tell him how much how much you adore him tell him what he means to you if you had just 60 seconds to talk to God what will you tell him lift your voice acknowledge him Everybody, whether you are outside or inside, open your mouth and bless his name. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. He's faithful. He's the God of love. He's the only wise God. He's mighty in his ways. Open your mouth and just love on him. Just bless him. Just bless him. Make sure you are talking to him. Your presence is heaven. Sharabakato Brahasi Marada Lende Rosa Marada Massima Zelo Borra Habazam Brehete Camosa Zemor Habadakaladi Masso Zembrona Hasaba. We give you praise. Believe that I. to be lifted high in your life above your circumstances and above everything that is around you then in the next few minutes I want you to join me and let's worship him with this song let it become a revelation to you this afternoon don't just sing it because you know it but sing it as a revelation in your spirit that tonight and even in this place, God will be lifted high above everything that is around you. That every tongue will confess that Jesus is Lord. And that every knee shall bow. Lift your hands, close your eyes and let's worship him this afternoon. Believe said high. Believe said Let them sing. Oh Lord, believe. Let me hear the voice of the congregation. For you are holy, holy righteous, and worthy. Oh Lord, believe.
situation. I go back with circumstance. For you, I hope. Righteous and you we are gathered before you the king of kings and the lord of lords the maker of the heavens and the earth and every time we gather before you we know it's a set time and an appointment to meet with you to experience your touch and to see you do marvelous things in our midst we invite your spirit in this place we ask that you have your way I ask that you will touch every life here present. Leave no stones undone. Let your name be glorified. In Jesus' name. Shall they be given? Amen. Now we're going to pray for about 5 to 10 minutes before we sit down. Uh, let me announce to you that this Sunday, next Sunday, we are going to be doing... Uh, a brief walk around spiritual warfare amen so i like your heart to be open and to be prepared it's going to be a militant service amen and it's because there are things that god wants to bring an end to in your life are you ready to partner with god today so when it's time to pray i want you to pray with every aggression you realize that in the life and ministry of jesus he prayed the most when he was faced with afflictions. He prayed the most when he was faced with problems. At the very end of his life on earth, in that garden, the Bible says he prayed till his sweat became as drop of blood. Amen. And if you are ready to pray this night, you will see the Lord change situations around your life. And many of us will be elevated to high places in the spirit. And certain things will manifest in your life. In Jesus name we pray first of all I want you to pray and say Lord tonight as your word comes forth open my eyes for two reasons number one that your eyes will be open to the wisdom and the revelation that is in the Word of God which is a solution to anything that is around you and then number two that God will open your eyes to discern the loopholes that the enemy has created in your life because of your ignorance do you understand that very very important because when the word of god comes forth it's not just the revelation that you hear but your eyes and your ears are opened for you to see even into your life it's like a mirror you get to see yourself for who you are because there are several things in our lives that has been an impediment to the fulfillment of god's promises in our lives and this night God will open your eyes to see those things and they will be done away with. Are you ready to pray? I want you to pray and say, Lord, tonight as your word comes forth, open my eyes, the eyes of my understanding. Open my eyes to see. Grant revelation, grant insight. Let every chapter of my life be opened up by the light of your word. Let everything that is hidden be exposed. Let every secret be revealed, be unveiled. By the power of your word, somebody is praying. Lift your voice and pray. Sorry, we can go. Are you praying at all? 
Harabashi Barahata Maradeba Kosana Vendele Proho Soprada Hasade Marahata Kabala Harade Kosubradi Kira Baraha Soda Lord open my eyes You that are watching or following online Make sure you pray There's no distance in the realm of the spirit There are no barriers in the realm of the spirit That the light And the insight that comes from the word of God Will open up your understanding let every secret be revealed let everything hidden be exposed for the entrance of his word give it light and it give it understanding to the simple somebody is praying young lady pray young man pray students pray lift your voice and call upon the Lord Jesus name the Bible says in Isaiah chapter 10 verse 27 and it shall come to pass in that day that the burden of the Assyrian shall be taken off your shoulder and his yoke from off your neck your neck and his yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing emphasis on the phrase in that day there's always a day of deliverance and one of the ways you know that it is your time or your season of deliverance number one it is the light that comes to you from the word of god and number two the availability of the power of god because while you are seated listening to the word of god some of you begin to sense a heavy atmosphere of the power of god and once you begin to sense that let it be known to you that today is your day of deliverance i can't hear your amen are you ready to pray in fact God, yokes are already breaking <laughs> i'm already seeing things breaking right now i want you to pray and say lord every limitation every yoke that the enemy has placed on my life in any aspect by any means whatsoever let this night be the night where that yoke is broken let this night be the night where that limitation is removed let the burden be lifted let the obstacle be crushed. Somebody needs to cry to heaven tonight. Somebody who came tonight desperate for an encounter with God, lift your voice and cry to him. If you miss the miracle service, this is a follow-up for you. Somebody cry to Jehovah. Oh Lord, my Father, every yoke, every limitation, every obstacle placed in any aspect of my life by the enemy, let this night be the night where your power dismantles, where your power destroys, where your power brings an end to. Are you praying? Make sure you are intentional this night. It has to be your night of an encounter with the King of Kings. Your night of an encounter with the power 
Lord of the Most tonight because you will show us mercy. I ask that your power will be mighty in this place. We bring every force under subjection to the Lordship of Jesus. We bring into captivity every thought pattern. We enforce submission in this place to the Lordship of Jesus. And we declare that the name of God will be glorified. My Father. Just be still and your eyes closed. I wish, I, I thought I would do this before at the end of the meeting. But I want to do it now. There is a young lady here that God, God is visiting you right now. With a mighty release of his power. And I'm seeing witchcraft around your family. And this is something that you are aware of and you have cried to God for. But right now the hand of God is released strongly over you. And while the power of God rests upon you now. 
God is visiting your families and he is bringing an end to witchcraft in the name of Jesus. Now I stretch my right hand that in the name of Jesus the power of God will look for that lady wherever she is. I curse that devil of witchcraft in your family. I announce that this is your season of liberty. This is your season of liberation. Let the traps that they have set be broken. Let their tenure in that family expire. And by the power of the blood, we set you free. Now, in the name of Jesus. Bring her for me. I want to touch her. You may be seated in the presence of God. God bless you. Quickly, bring her. The deliverance is not complete. Help that lady with black scarf there. I'm seeing, him. I'm seeing an angel putting something on her. Yokes are going to break this night. Yokes are going to break this night. Let me just touch her. Father, I announce by the power of prophecy that an end has come. I curse those spirits right now. I challenge you to your roots. And before the end of this service, lose everyone in that family you have tied. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Now the fire of God is, is already working right now. I see five people that... I'm seeing the fire of God burning off chains. You know that metal cannot be destroyed by fire. Not the fire of God. The fire of God is able to destroy chains. And I'm seeing those chains on the hands of five people. Don't worry. The power of God will pick them right now. Lord, if what I'm saying is correct, if I've heard you, I stretch my right hand. Wherever those five people are, I command in the name of Jesus and by the ministry of fire, let those yokes be broken now. 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 Just help them. There will be at least five. Anything that has tied your productivity. Anything that has regulated your labor. Now I'm speaking prophetically over everybody. Anything that has regulated your labor. That what your hand can handle is not up to what God has determined for you. In the name of Jesus, that cycle comes to an end today. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let those chains of darkness be destroyed by the fire of God now. Be destroyed now. In the name of Jesus. Let's go to the word. Today, next Sunday, by an emergency of the Spirit, we are going to be doing some spiritual warfare. Amen? I had some good series I wanted us to take in July. But when we entered this month, I could sense a heavy burden in my spirit. And you see, in as much as teachings that come from this place, comes from rigorous times of studies and also by the revelation of the spirit of god so that men and women can be brought into acquaintance with the wisdom of god however there are times when there is an urgency in the spirit and there are things that god wants to address quickly and at such times we must be at such times we must be diligent enough we must be submissive enough to receive turn our hearts to the holy spirit and receive and partner with him to see in the manifestation the things that god desires amen so this sunday next sunday are going to be power sundays say amen to that because god is out to visit somebody in the month of july this is your season and your time in the name of Jesus Christ. <sighs> Thank you, Father. I'm seeing the angel of the Lord anointing a young lady. And this oil 
is a new dimension of the prophetic grace you will know because she's, she's, there's going to be a loud shout a strong prophetic unction God is saying he has activated discernment in your life and God is stretching forth his right hand into your family you are going to begin to see the creative dimension of the prophetic you know there are two dimensions of the prophetic there is the revelatory there is the creative the revelatory is what helps you interact you can see you can hear but it doesn't mean you have solved the problem but the creative is knowing how to bring the power of God translating it into that situation that you have seen and bringing solution to it in the name of Jesus I declare that it will be so for that family the hand of God is upon you your eyes are opening in this season and you will never be the same Can we join in the word? I think we should. I want to talk to us today about what I call dealing with faulty foundations. Dealing with faulty foundations. Get used to that. That's how the service will be. I'll talk to you tonight about dealing with faulty foundations. We are going to address issues around foundations, ancestry, covenants. And then next week, I will talk to you again about dealing with witchcraft and household wickedness. Alright? So make sure you are around next week. There are things that will be uprooted. There are people here under the sound of my voice, respectfully speaking, I want to acknowledge and appreciate your coming into the house of God today. But you came because God wants your eyes to be open to certain impediments. Certain obstacles that the enemy has placed along your path and in your family that you are not aware of. And by the end of this service, your eyes will be open to see that these invisible traps or invisible snares are what, are what is responsible for what you've been going through. And tonight you'll be set free. In the name of Jesus Christ. Dealing with faulty foundations. Isaiah chapter 51 from verse 1 to 2. Isaiah 51 from verse 1 to 2. He said, listen to me, you who follow after righteousness. You who seek the Lord. Look to the rock from which you were hewn. The word hewn is the same as the word to dig or to carve out. And to the whole of the pit from which you were dug, look to Abraham your father, and to Sarah who bore you. For I called him alone and blessed him and increased him. God was addressing his people, the children of Israel. God was about to say things that would determine their future from this point. And it's interesting to know that God will have them look into their past into their roots into the foundations of their existence of course we know that abraham is the patriarch and the father of the nation israel and so god was about to do something in the nation of israel now something that will positively affect their future that is what you will see from verse 3 down but in order for the stage to be set for what god wants to do god said look to where you came out from and I've said this before and I will keep repeating it because I believe this is the truth with all due respect that if you follow through the storyline of scripture God has never introduced any man in his generation or to his generation without first exhuming the foundation of that man the word exhume means to dig out it means to probe it means to search deep. There is never a time that God introduced a man or a woman to their generation without first of all examining their foundations. So most of the times when you read in scripture, this is how the Bible will put it. It will say, so-so person, the son of so-so, and so, the son of so-so, and so. Is that true? 
In fact, even the Lord Jesus did not escape that. Of course, when he came on earth, he came as a man. And so he was subjected to everything that man was subjected to. If man would hunger, Jesus also experienced hunger. If man would be tired, Jesus experienced tiredness. He relinquished his godly attributes in heaven before coming down in flesh. So he had to depend on the Holy Spirit for everything. That is why nothing concerning ministry started for him until the Spirit of God had come upon him. That was to show us that Jesus was man as well. So when you look at Luke chapter 3, when he was baptized by John the Baptist and he came out of the water, the Spirit of God descended on him and that became the commissioning for his ministry. You will discover, please ensure you are not distracted. Amen? It's not just about sitting still. Make sure your mind and your attention is here. So, after that baptismal service, if you start reading from verse 23, 24 down to the end of that chapter, you will discover that the writer began to trace the genealogy of Jesus. Every time you are about to step forth in life into destiny, the realm of the spirit begins to check your foundation. There are forces in the realm of the spirit that will begin to probe your root. And the reason is because foundations are very important as far as the future of any structure is concerned. In a moment or two, if you allow me, I would like to give you clear definitions of the word foundations. Lay some premises and then we will go deep into the word but let's look at some other scriptures verse 16 of the same isaiah 51 verse 16 of the same isaiah 51 and i have put my words in your mouth actually a few years ago this was a word that the lord gave me at a time of retreat this was a word god spoke to me and it activated certain things in my life and in my ministry. And I've put my words in your mouth. I've covered you with the shadow of my hand. That I may plant the heavens. And do what? Lay the foundation. Somebody say foundations. Of the earth. Notice that he didn't say anything about foundations when he was talking about heaven. But he spoke about foundations when he was talking about the earth. And when he's talking about the earth, he's also talking about the inhabitants on the surface of the earth. So this is a prophetic commissioning that God was giving to his servant. That I've given you authority to examine and to set right the foundation of my people and anyone to whom I will send you to on earth. Do you understand that? He said, and to say to Zion, you are my people. And anytime God gives you, if you are like me, if you've had the experience where maybe in the time of prayer or seeking the face of God, God shows you a scripture. He speaks a scripture to you. That scripture becomes your signature scripture. Something in the realm of the spirit has been conferred over you. And you will need to be conscious of it so you can walk in the full expression of it. Some of you, there are things that God has told you in scripture. I'm not talking about the one you found. No. I'm saying that you may have known the scripture before, but God showed you specifically in that season. I'd like you to know that the operations of the Spirit of God in your life henceforth from the day that encounter came is going to be tied heavily to that scripture. That scripture is a key to the storehouses of heaven for certain resources to be deployed to you. But if you are not conscious of it, you will walk through life. It's like somebody having millions in his account and not knowing that he has money. Maybe because he didn't get a credit a lot. Is that true? And this night, some of you that God has spoken some personal word to, we are going to, by the power of the Holy Ghost, activate it man, its manifestation. Amen. Your amen needs life. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Psalms 51 verse 5. We are still talking on dealing with foundations. Psalms 51 verse 5. This is David speaking. As a king, he said, Behold, I was brought forth in iniquity, and in sin my mother 
conceive me. David was exclaiming. At this point, he was repenting before God because of, you know, a crime, a sin he committed. And if you know the story of David from the beginning of his life to this point, you will never realize or you will never believe that he could do such a thing. Kill the man, got his wife pregnant, and when the man was dead, got married to the, the man. That is because there were things in the foundation of David's life that were hidden. There are things in your life that may not manifest until you are in certain seasons of glory or you are at certain stages of prime in your life. So if you don't understand dealings around foundations, you will discover that at a particular time in your life, you will be faced with certain events that you don't understand. And you don't know from whence they came from. How many of you have been there before? Certain things begin to happen that are strange. You've never seen this kind of catastrophe before. And you begin to wonder where they came from. How many of you have been there before? Let me know if I'm talking to myself. A certain point in your life when all is going well, you wake up one morning and you just lose everything in your account. And there's no explanation as to how the money went. Or you wake up one day and everybody in your house is sick. Mysteriously. Or you enter a season in your life where you think things should just be good as usual. And instantly you begin to record a, a nexus of failures. I don't know if you have experienced that before. Today we are going to diagnose what that problem is. It is nothing more than foundations. David said in sin, my mother conceived me. I was born in iniquity. I was born in sin. As a result, even though I was later anointed, it didn't deal with what was in my foundation, in sin. Now let me explain something to you that is not in scripture. Many scholars of the Bible believe, as it is recorded in scriptural history, that David was the son of another woman. He was not the same mother, the same father with all his seven brothers. You remember when Samuel came to Jesse to anoint the king? Seven of Jesse's sons passed before him. And God didn't accept any of them. Those seven sons were the children of the first wife, the original wife. So possibly many Bible scholars have agreed that David was the son of a concubine. I don't have time. I would have shown you David's relationship with men like Abishai and Joab. How that they were cousins and all of that. If you hear that, then you would believe what he's saying in this scripture. That he's seen my mother. Because that's illegitimate birth. Is that true? Romans chapter 5 verse 12. He said, Therefore, just as through one man, sin entered the world, and death through sin, and thus death spread to all men, because all sin. This, this scripture is like mathematics. Through one man, sin entered the world. And because of sin, death came. And because of that, all men were declared sinners. Not because they committed any sin, but because all men came from one man, and it was through that man that sin. Talk to me now. Amen. Because we are going to deal with some things this night. And I want you, I want you to be very serious about destiny this night. Let's go to defining foundations. Foundations. If you are writing, I'll try to be as fast as I can because I want us to live here in good time. Number one, these are the definitions I can give you on the word foundations. Number one, origins, beginnings, or on the line basis. Foundations are defined as origins, beginnings, on the line basis. Or principles. 
of a theme or structure. Origins, beginnings, underlying basis or principles of a theme or structure. Another word for principle is rudiments. In other words, the elementary uh, the elementary part of that thing. The things that come together to form that particular thing or structure. Number two, foundations are the forces that determine the existence or the future of a structure. Foundations are the forces that determine the existence or the future of a structure or system. The forces that determine the existence or the future of a structure or system. Having said that, let's look at foundations from the standpoint of human relations and family. Human relations and family context of foundations. Can I go on? They are forces that determines the existence or quality of life. Forces that determines the existence or quality of life in the individuals within a sociological context. Forces that determines the existence or quality of life in the individuals that are within a sociological context individuals in a family in a community the forces that determines the existence and the quality of life the kind of life that they will live the kind of results that they will produce the things about their life will be determined by these forces now to zoom in on our topic let me define what i call evil foundations evil or faulty foundations evil or faulty foundations are negative forces they are negative forces at the beginnings negative forces at the beginnings or origins of families negative forces at the beginning or origins of families that occasion negative or evil events at the origin of that family these are the underlying forces that occasion negative of course if there are negative forces they will only give birth to negative events that occasion negative or evil events in the perpetual existence of that family evil foundations are negative forces at the beginnings or origins of families that occasion negative or evil events in the perpetual existence of that family. What I'm sharing tonight is no respecter of tribe or race or skin color or social status or even anointing. Say amen very true it is important that you note that evil foundations are a product of curses and satanic covenants they are the product of curses or satanic covenants so let's try to understand what these two words are curses and covenants being that they are responsible for the delivery of foundations evil foundations that occasion negative and evil events in the lives of individuals and families curses curses are negative decrees for those of us that are writing curses are negative decrees verdicts or pronouncements Causes are negative decrees, verdicts, or pronouncements that limit, disempower, or destroy the lives and destinies of its recipients. Am I too fast for you? Verdicts or pronouncements that limit, 
disempower or destroy the lives and destinies of its recipients. What are causes? Negative decrees, verdicts. In other words, statements that were made, pronouncements that limit, disempower, or destroy the lives and destinies of its recipient. It is also important that you note that these curses can come either unwittingly. In other words, someone may just make a pronouncement, not really because he means it. And you see, that's been the problem with many people. People are careless sometimes, respectfully speaking, with their speech, especially as it affects the people around them or the people who are close to them. Not knowing that these statements that are made carry great implications. So curses can come unwittingly. Somebody just made a pronouncement. He didn't mean it. Maybe he said it out of anger. And later on he cooled down, not realizing what the damage he had just done. Or they can be deliberately. And it usually will happen by someone who is in a, a form of authority over the individual that is affected. That means to place a course, you must have some form of authority over the individual, the family, or the thing that you are crossing. So Jesus, you remember when he crossed the fig tree? The Bible said what happened? That the fig tree withered to its root. The reason was because, number one, Jesus was man as at that time. And God had given man dominion over everything he created. Number two, Jesus was the word that created even that tree. That means that somebody who is a father figure, a mother figure, a spiritual authority, if you occupy any form of authority over the individual or the family, your pronouncement can contribute to the progress or to the destruction of that individual. Covenants. Covenants are pacts, P-A-C-T-S. Pacts or agreements or transactions. Pacts, agreements or transactions between a mortal and a spirit entity or between a mortal and a mortal. In other words, between two human beings, but majorly because of our teaching tonight between a human being and a spirit covenants are pacts agreements or transactions between a mortal and a spirit entity when covenants are made they are they are made for the following reasons first of all they are made to occasion an advantage on the life of the individual that is the human being now is seeking some form of advantage that is based on the strength of that spirit entity so when a human being is making a covenant with a spirit whether knowingly or knowingly one of the reasons will be to occasion an advantage in his or her life that is based on the strength of that spirit entity of course we believe that the realm of the spirit is superior to this realm in fact this material realm is a product of the realm of the spirit you can see that in genesis 2 verse 4 that means that the energy level that drives this material realm is sourced from the realm of the spirit that is why power for instance electrical energy can you see it can you see it with your eyes but can you deny its reality? Good. So these are spiritual forces that are able to energize or to determine the cause of things in the natural. In fact, those of you who read science in school, they spoke about an atom. The atom is the smallest indivisible part of an element. And that atom is made up of three forces. A proton, a neutron, and an electron that cycles around it. These are things you cannot see with your eyes. But they determine the framework and the existence of that particular element. 
whatever it is. So, one of the reasons for why covenants are made with spirits is to occasion an advantage. Now, generations ago, our forefathers, in, you know, they were devoid of civilization, and in their primitive age, you know, those times they called the Stone Age, isn't it? When technology was either at its cradle or was not even here at all. Africa, for example, was one of the race that was the most disadvantaged because we were not awakened to civilization as it were. And because of that, there were many problems that our ancestors encountered. For instance, malaria was an affliction. But because they had no exposure to science and technology had not advanced, malaria became a big deal for them. And so anytime somebody was sick of malaria, the person will almost surely die. Because they don't even get to discover when that parasite that causes malaria enters the body of the individual. There were no hospitals. There were no ways they could do tests to know that a, paras a parasite was in the blood of that individual. So many of them died because of malaria. Now, if you have malaria, a shot of injection, chloroquine injection can do the job. Or you can take drugs for three days and that's all. But in their time, it was a deadly disease because of the level of ignorance then. And they were faced with these and many other problems. So in order to seek help, knowing that they were alone, to survive alone, they had to reach out to the supernatural. They had to reach out to the realm of the spirit. They knew that they were unseen forces that were existing around them. And so they went making transactions and dealings and agreements with this spirit, seeking to occasion an advantage from this spirit. We don't have drug to cure malaria. So help us heal us from malaria. In fact, in those times, if you were a medicine man, that's what they call them. In our days now, is a medical doctor, you go to school and be trained. But in those days, there were people who were specialized in studying the herbs in the bush that could heal any disease. I'd like you to know that that was not natural knowledge. They had the assistance of spirit entities that probably they knew nothing about that assisted them to know which herb can cure which disease. So they were like mediums between the realm of the spirit and the natural world. And unknown to them, this was a covenant that they entered into. The second reason why covenants are made with spirit, or the second thing that happens when covenants are made between mortals and spirit, is that it has transgenerational implications. It has transgenerational implications. When a human being makes a deal with a spirit, unknown to that human being, the spirit wants transgenerational allegiance. Just the way you have agreed with me to serve me and I will do this for you. So in your descendants, in every generation, I must have somebody who will pledge their loyalty to me. And through that person, I will still enslave the entire descendant. So that my signature will be seen on their lives. And you, the reason was because spirits don't have body. They don't have bodies. For you to be on this earth, you need a body to manifest. So spirits were always looking for human beings or looking for human entities or uh, families through which they can manifest their characteristics. You know a spirit doesn't die. A spirit doesn't feel pain. Many of the limitations we have as human beings, they don't have it. But one of the ways you can torment a spirit is that the spirit will continually exist from one generation to an another generation without manifesting its realities on the earth. Spirits want to manifest their realities. And the realm of men is the showroom for spirits. That's why they don't mind thousands of them staying in the body of one man. Remember the man that Jesus met at Gadara? 
How many people, how many spirits were in him? He said legion. A legion is a troop of 6,000 Roman soldiers. I don't even know if this compound can contain them. And all of them must take turns in manifesting in that man. That's why the Bible says this man, he was so full of energy. The Bible says he will cry morning till night. He will cut himself with stones. Anytime you see extraordinary discharge of energy in a human being or an animal, there's a spirit involved. And for making the mistake to allowing that spirit manifest, the spirit will seek to see that that manifestation of his continues from one generation after the other from that individual. Number three, what happens when covenants are made with spirit? It involves submission. On the part of the lesser party, it involves submission. The human will have to submit to that spirit entity. And on the part of the spirit, it will involve dominion or lordship. The spirit wants to be seen and worshipped and revered as Lord. That is why Satan came to Jesus in the last temptation. What did he say? All the glory of the earth are mine and the kingdoms thereof. I will give it to you if only you fall down and what? Talk to me now. Are you afraid? This night is a night of deliverance. Also, you need to know this about covenants. That there are three kinds of covenants, basically. I haven't understood that covenants are agreements and pacts that are made with spirit entities. Number one, there is spoken covenant. In other words, a transaction carried out between a spirit and a human being by way of words as a matter of fact there's almost no transaction with any evil spirit or any spirit at all that is without words because in the realm of the spirit words are not just communicators words are conveyors words are the transport systems in the realm of the spirit words are the systems for creation in the realm of the spirit that is why the word spirit is a word is that not true? And everything that exists, whether invisible or, vis or visible, is a word. What are you sitting on? Talk to me now. Is, what is that? What are you wearing? What is that? Who is God? Huh? Somebody say God is God. What kind of political answer is that? John 4 24 who is God okay let me help you I know you were going to walk all through the week you didn't read the Bible so let's help you here now. according to that scripture God is who what is a spirit good answer so there's no transaction with any spirit that is without the instrument of words and these spoken covenants can either be in the form of blessings. Maybe the spirit blesses that individual just like God did to Abraham. Or it can be a curse. Or it can be an agreement. Because there were moments in scripture where God spoke with men. Is that not true? God had interactions with men. There were also moments in scripture where men spoke with the devil. Yes or no? Now let me show you something that the Lord opened my eyes to. You know, in 1 John chapter 5, one of those verses, he said, there are three that bear witness in the heavens. The Father, the Word, and the Spirit. Then he said, there are three that bear witness on earth. The Spirit, the water, and the blood. The Spirit, the water, and the blood. I'm talking about spoken covenant, isn't it? He said there are three that bear witness. And the Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 13 and in verse 1, that in, you will go back to this scripture, but go to 2 Corinthians 13 verse 1 and 2. He says in the mouth of two or three, 2 Corinthians 13 verse 1 or verse 2, he says in the mouth of two or three witness, a word is established. 
That means to witness is to speak and to agree, isn't it? Go back to First John. The spirit, the water, and the blood. Everybody look at me. If a man is making an agreement with a spirit, there are three entities involved there that are bearing witness to that covenant. First of all, the spirit. Then, the saliva coming from the mouth of that man is water. In as much as 70% of that man's body is water. And the blood that is in that man. And the Bible says the blood of flesh contains the life of flesh. There are three that bears witness on earth. The spirit, the water. Are you following me? So even if it was in the cover of darkness, like me or Kuku Sheshe. How many of you have watched that film? You had better watch that film. Go and grab it. Is online. Go and stream it and watch. You notice in the scene of that film where the lady appeared to him in his house. Who was with them? Nobody. Who who heard everything that happened there? Who saw everything that happened? Nobody. But there were three witnesses there. The spirit that appeared and the water and the blood that is contained in that man. And in the mouth of two or three witnesses, every word is what? The way you are answering, I think we should close the teaching here. So, next week we will continue. Because I came here by the help of the Holy Spirit to help us. I want you to open your eyes and see that what is happening in your life is not a mystery. There is a written covenant. The Bible speaks of in Colossians chapter 2 verse 14. It speaks of the handwriting of ordinances that were written against us. Sometimes a contract, which is another form of a covenant, is written. And then you sign, and another person signs. And there's a film those days they call Ghost Rider. The signature was with blood. How many of you have watched that film? You can go and watch those kind of films. He had a deal with the devil, and they needed to sign the contract. And it was to sign with his blood. But they didn't tell him he would sign with his blood. When he opened the contract, something caught his hand and blood spilled. And at the spilling of that blood, 1,500 demons were released to him to fulfill that contract. You see how spirits work. So some people can go to a shrine. Because even these days, there are modern shrines now. Where you go and they will write, they will tell you to write something, they will fold it in paper and tell you to chew it. Or tell you to spit on it or whatever it is. Those are written covenants. They can even write something in the ground. As long as there was a transaction there between you and an entity. And there was a writing. is a covenant. Then there is the most powerful of all in my opinion. Blood covenant. And I don't think I need to explain that to us. I don't know if these days young people still do blood covenants in relationship. If you did it this night, you need to humble yourself and seek deliverance. But I used to know those days that some people love themselves so much and maybe their parents don't want them to get married because you know, in Africa, marriage is between the families. When you say you love the lady so much, just hold out your love first. Though. Go and visit them. Let them give you a list. Then your love will be tested by fire. Especially when one page of that list is two million. Say amen. amen. The way you are pretending, I, I don't understand. Amen. For those who are listening from outside Nigeria, well, these are African, African traditions we are discussing. Blood covenant. That is why you are coming into Christ Jesus. Your deliverance from the power of darkness into the kingdom of God happened by blood. Because the life of flesh is in this blood. And every time blood is spilled by any way whatsoever, there is a court in the realm of the spirit that ensures that the due diligence of justice is given for that blood. Even when that blood is, when a young lady sleeps with someone who is not a husband and is disvergent blood was spilled is that not so 
covenant was enacted. And you know one thing with the realm of the spirit, their laws and their rules apply, whether you know it or not. In law, they used to say that ignorance of law is what? It's no excuse. Is that true? But tonight, every written, spoken of blood covenant that was entered into against you, with or without your knowledge, by the blood of Jesus, we delete it this night. I say we cancel it this night. All right. Now let me give you examples of people who experience foundational troubles in scripture. I told you that foundations are the forces are the origin of a, of a family or an individual that determines the quality of life. So if those forces are divine forces, it means that the people in that family will experience breakthrough, progress and advancement. But if those forces are satanic forces, then all you will find there is evil. That's why the devil is called the devil. Devil. Doer of evil. That's what the D is there for. Can we join in? You cannot fulfill destiny without first dealing with your foundations. I've said that before. And another thing that you need to know about foundations or foundational problems is that they can manifest in three forms. They either manifest as patterns, as cycles, or as mindsets. If you want to understand the foundation of an individual, study his life or her life to find out these three things. If there are patterns, if there are cycles, if there are mindsets. Now, a pattern is a tailor-made sequence of events. In other words, you are not the first person it is happening with. Patterns are usually transgenerational mistakes. I'm talking in, this, in the sense of evil now. They are usually transgenerational mistakes, transgenerational reproach, or transgenerational problems. So you will discover that in this family, this the women cannot bear children or even if they will it will not be on time because if you check the preceding generations you will find pockets of that manifestation that is called a pattern that's one of the ways foundational problems manifest another way is a cycle in the case of a cycle a cycle happens within a generation it's not necessarily transgenerational so you can find the same thing happening among different siblings in one family. For instance, you will find a family where people struggle before they get admission to higher institution. The first born spent seven years before getting to the university. The second born managed to get polytechnic, but when she was going for a university degree, she spent two years before going. The third born spent four years before getting the admission. Now the fourth one is writing jam. And it's not passing. That's a cycle. It is factored into a particular time of their lives that this thing will occur. I wish I had the time I would have mentioned many other things. But you can use the examples to probe into your life or the life of someone who is close to you. And find the reality of what I'm talking about. Patterns or sorry foundational problems can also manifest as mindset. Two years ago, we did a teaching on generational curses versus generational mindset. I love you to get that teaching. I think it's online on all our social media uh, resource centers or you can meet the media department. Generational curses versus generational mindset. And in that teaching, we try to examine that certain predicaments that befall families or individuals. It's not all that are curses. Because in the case of a curse, somebody deliberately or unwittingly made a pronouncement. But then there are other problems that came up not because there was a curse, but because it was a mindset that the devil tricked people in that family to enter into one generation after another. 
For instance, you find a family where the men are frivolous with money and lazy. They don't really do anything. It's the women that are the ones working. With all due respect. But if they get money, they can spend it. I don't know what they did with the money. You will find that that happened with the person's grandfather. The person's father worked as a civil servant in the state government for 35 years and retired and all he has is an uncompleted house not because there was no money but because there was a mindset of frivolity and luxurious spending the person didn't save or the person didn't make investment they kept waiting for salary and now the young man has finished graduating from the university is looking for an NGO job where he can make quick and big money meanwhile god showed him in the university in a dream god showed him entering into entrepreneurship but because it is a mindset that is prevalent amongst the males he wants to go the same way like his father and his grandfather waiting for a job and now it is five years he has been waiting for a job and no job somebody needs to tell that young man that this is a mindset if you are with me say amen do you want me to continue or I should stop? Let me give you a few examples. I want us to pray quickly because there are things that will break this night. A few examples from scripture. So I've told you that you cannot fulfill destiny without first dealing with your foundations. Before you step out in life, probe your foundation. Before you make any attempt, make a search into your history. He said, look to your roots. Look to whence the pit whence you were dug from. And begin to discover what kind of foundational forces are existing. Let me show you the story of a prophet who was experiencing foundational captivity. What did I say? A prophet. A prophet is the one that is supposed to deliver people. No, be so. Oh, but let me show you a prophet who was a victim of what he was sent to deliver people from. Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 5. Jeremiah was a mighty prophet of God in the history of the children of Israel. In fact, Daniel had to study his books and his writings to understand the time of captivity that was determined by God for the children of Israel. And it was those informations that Daniel used to enter into a season of intercession that brought the deliverance of an entire nation called Israel. So Jeremiah was a powerful prophet, a prophet that other prophets looked up to. But let me show you his life. Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I sanctified you. I ordained you a prophet to where? To where? Go to verse 9 and verse 10. That's a mighty anointing. Some prophets are sent to a family. Some prophets are even sent to an individual. Jesus said that there were many widows in Israel, but to none of them was Elijah the prophet sent to save the widow. Some prophets are sent to individuals. And what a wonderful thing it is where you locate the prophetic voice of God over your life. That human representative of the voice of God that is able to speak you from where you are to the purposes of God as designed for, by God for you. Some are sent to families, some to communities, some to territories, some to regions, some to nations, and some to the nations. Then the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth and the Lord said to me, Behold, I have put my words in your mouth. See, I have this day set you over the nations and over the kingdoms. Then he began to talk about foundational issues. He said to root out and to pull down. To destroy and to throw down. To build and to plant. So Jeremiah carried a mighty deliverance anointing attached to his prophetic ministry. To be able to correct the foundations of nations. Yet go to Jeremiah chapter 15. We are going to read verse 18, then verse 15, then verse 4. King James translation. Verse 18 verse 15 and verse 4 Jeremiah 15 with such a mighty anointing 
Look at the problem of the prophet. This is the prophet talking. He said, why is my pain perpetual? And my wound incurable? He was groaning in agony at a stage in his life. This is a prophet sent to nations. This is a prophet who is supposed to be a deliverer. You know, Dr. D.K. Lukoya wrote a book, When the Deliverer Needs Deliverance. And I believe in my spirit that I'm talking to at least one person here. Who knows that he or she carries the calling of God on her life. You have seen manifestations around you. But you cannot explain the mysterious trap around your destiny. So that you are suffering from the things that you are meant to deliver others from. So last week somebody came to you to pray for the person because the person has dreams where they are feeding the person. But you remember that you too a day before that person came they were feeding you in the dream. You are not the first. And God brought you here this night so that an end can be brought to that ugly situation. Why is my pain perpetual and my wound incurable which refuses to be healed? This is a prophet talking. A prophet is supposed to speak for God and bring solution in a time of captivity. Bring answers in a season of affliction. Yet the problems, the prophet said, my own problem refuses to be healed. He said, will you surely be to me like an unreliable stream? He began to question God. As waters that fail, go to verse 15. Oh Lord, you know, he's still lamenting. Remember me and visit me like some of you have prayed. And take vengeance for me on my persecutors. In your enduring patience, do not take me away. Know that for your sake I have suffered rebuke. How does he put it in New King James? There's one word I'm looking for there. Yeah, rebuke. He said, I've suffered. He was crying to God in prayers. Why is my pain like this? God, won't you deliver me? I've suffered too much reproach. People are mocking me now. I'm the one that is supposed to deliver people. But I'm the one that needs help. Here I am, saying that I'm a man of God, anointed by the grace of God. But I have to beg people to survive. He said, will you not deliver me? Will you not revenge me? This is witchcraft, I know. But will you not arise on my behalf? Will you not end my suffering? That's the prayer of somebody here. God answered. Go to verse 4. This is God answering him now. God said, I will hand them over to trouble. To all kingdoms of the earth. He said, your problem is because of Manasseh, the son of Hezekiah. King of Judah. For what he did in Jerusalem. Somebody that had died. God said, this pain you are going through, Jeremiah. And by extension, the captivity of the entire nation you are, you are, you are raised from. Is because of somebody in the ancestry. Somebody. Manasseh was an evil king. If you read his story in the book of 2 Kings and in 2 Chronicles. Manasseh devoted himself to idol worship. The Bible says he caused his sons to pass through the fire. That was a kind of sacrifice that they did in the occult, in the occult realm in those days. That you will sacrifice your children to demons in the fire. And because of that, you will be elevated to higher levels of spiritual authority. Even when Manasseh had troubles with other kings, instead of him to go to God, he went to other gods. God had to force him in captivity to acknowledge the God of heaven. And because of what he did, he brought disaster upon Judah and Israel. Yet, generations later suffered because of what he did. Just because you come to church every day and pray. Just because you are serving in the house of God. Sowing seeds and giving your all for the gospel. Which is very good. And I encourage you to continue. Does not mean that that alone is a yardstick. For God to undo what are foundational issues. Most of the time God wants to answer our prayers. Because we seem like God have abandoned us. But don't you imagine that with what you have heard now, God may be screaming from the realm of the spirit, but you may not be hearing because you are devoid of understanding. God may be saying that my son, my daughter, I've heard your prayers, 
but you need to deal with your foundations first that's where the problem is coming from but when we develop a routine of prayer in the body of christ that is not sensitive enough to inquire from god and probe the origin of things we will pray and keep seeing the opposite of our prayers and at a point you will be brought to a place of frustration and begin to think that god was a liar are you here i told somebody one time i said if you are going through a lot and you have prayed and there is no solution i said there is one more prayer you need to pray it's called the prayer of inquiry there was three years famine in israel when david was king david that god made a covenant with david that in his reign israel experienced peace god said david was the man after my heart yet for three years there was famine people were dying of hunger and it was like god was silent maybe they went to the ark of god they didn't hear anything from god and david was troubled the bible says in the third year david inquired of the lord that was when god spoke to him and said this famine is a destruction brought upon israel because of what saul did saul killed the gibeonites and joshua had made a a covenant with the gibeonites many years ago 450 years ago that they will not kill any of the inhabitants of gibeonites of gibeon but saw in his rash zeal without knowledge went and slay them and he didn't know that their blood cried to the courts that was in heaven and judgment was released and instead of the judgment to come when the evil perpetrator was alive he had died but here was an innocent king david in fact david loved god he was the one who started creating choirs that when they go to the temple it's not only prayer and sacrifice they will sing songs of worship what did god want that david did not do in fact david was the one who initiated the building of a house for god god said you would have built but there's blood in your hands but let your son build yet he suffered because of the mistakes made from his ancestry from his foundations i'm not here to make you scared tonight i'm here to open your eyes by the wisdom of the word of god i'm here to answer a long-standing question in your life what is it about your life that god cannot lift this pain are you supposed to go through it continually every year you keep you keep you know encouraging yourself you know the way nigerians say it one day you go better every year you keep believing in hope that someday our story will change but the more the years pass by the more your life is going from bad to worse and amongst those serving in the house of god you are number one amongst those you have given and sacrificed you have given everything what is the problem foundations and i started by showing you from the life of a prophet so you know that being a man of god doesn't make you escape it even the one that is talking to you i have foundations to deal with and you know what because the foundation of a building determines the destiny and the future of that building again and again as years progress they will have to engineers will have to keep ensuring they check that building to the foundation if they notice any crack the next thing they are look, doing is they are looking at the foundation where is it coming from i had the story from dr paul and angel god's servant that he read somewhere a research was done that there was a building after many years cracks were noticed at the 12th floor of the building but those cracks were traced to the foundation 12th floor foundation so 12 generations later can suffer for what was entrenched from the foundation and sometimes because we don't understand found the issue of foundational dealing with foundational problems it looks like god is not powerful it looks like god is not all powerful but you must understand that the realm of the spirit is a realm of legalities it's a judicial realm it's not a realm that is corrupt like our realm where people can bypass justice and bribe their way somebody hit somebody on the road they take that person to road safety office or to police station and instead of the person to pay the bills and charged for what the crime he committed because of some money in the hand of an officer they can let that case go that can happen in on eto not in the realm of the spirits 
Can I show you examples? Number one, Enoch and Noah. In Genesis chapter 5, the Bible gave us a long genealogy from Seth, the son of Adam. And at the seventh, the Bible says a man was born whose name was Enoch. The Bible says Enoch walked with God. And then God took him. He gave birth to a son that was named Methuselah. Because of Enoch's walk with God, because of the covenant, see, the covenant relationship he had with God, God elongated the lifespan of Methuselah. So much that Methuselah lived the longest on earth. As a matter of fact, historically speaking in scripture, Methuselah died, it was immediately after the death of Methuselah that the flood came. In fact, scholars believe, as it has been calculated, that it was the day Methuselah died that the flood came. That means that the extension of the life of Methuselah was the physical token of the grace that God gave the generation of Noah to repent. And Methuselah was the grandfather of Noah. Methuselah gave birth to Lamech, but Lamech died before him. Methuselah enjoyed that lifespan, even though he didn't do anything. But he enjoyed it because a man walked with God and, and set a foundation for longevity and for divine purposes to be fulfilled. So that when Noah was born, the great grand, the grandson, the great grandson, God, the Bible says, Noah found grace in the eyes of God. Not because of what Noah did, but because of a covenant that God had with his great grandfather. More examples. The story of Africa. In Genesis chapter 10, verse 6 to 10, and verse chapter 11, verse 1 to 7. After the flood, remember that Noah had three sons. One of them was called Ham. Ham was the son that was cursed by Noah. Ham gave birth to some children. Among his children was a man called Cush. Cush became the ancestor of the African race. Because the word Cush also means black. And you know the African race are mostly dark skinned. So that's where it was coined from. Now Cush already had a cursed ancestry through Ham. To complicate matters, he gave birth to a son called Nimrod. And Nimrod was an evil man. As a matter of fact, the Bible says Nimrod was a mighty hunter. Let me explain that word. Nimrod was not hunting squirrels and grass cutters. The original Hebrew rendition of being a mighty hunter was that Nimrod generated so much influence amongst men that he began to form a government that was against the government of God. That was why he was the sole ancestor of the Tower of Babel. That's what it means when he says he's a mighty hunter before the Lord. Well, Nimrod's evil didn't end there. Historically speaking, Nimrod killed his father and married his mother. She's called Semiramis. And Semiramis is one of the ancient idols that they started serving in those days. <laughs> I don't have time. I would have traced it down to modern day religion and show you some religions that worship a woman and her son. And that is Nimrod and his mother. Behave as if you didn't hear that one. And these things, you can go and study and get the facts. These are not things that uh, I just cook up. You can go and search. Do your research and get it. Can I give you more? Because when I say pray, I want you to pray and see if fire is literally burning around you. Because we must deal with foundational issues today. Some of you, your financial predicament is tied to your foundation. Unknown to you, there are people nobody in your lineage has broken through this level of financial acquisition that is the reason why every time you are trying to break into the realm of millions it's as if all the forces around you begin to fight you there are foundations forces in your foundations that regulate the financial destiny of men within your bloodline so yes in christ jesus you are a new creature in the spirit but in the flesh you are covenanted to that lineage 
And Satan takes advantage of biological law because God is a law, God of law and order. That is why when Satan argued his case against Job before God, what did God say? Go ahead. Not because God could not overrule on Satan. But you see, if God overrules every time, God will be interrupting the synchronism within which generation is supposed to play. That's why it's not every time God will not arise when you are in a problem. No. Everything is according to his divine plan before the worlds began. So he has written your life like a story. And now that you are in a little crisis, what you are not seeing is that next month, God is going to make you come out of the crisis. And you are crying to God to intervene. God can intervene and overrule. But he has already written it in his book and it is law. And the thing with God is that if he says something or he decrees something, everyone including God is bound to his word. The Bible says in Psalms 138, he honors his word more than his name. So for some of you, your finances, check your foundation. This deal that you are trying to click from many years and it's not clicking. Let me ask you a question. Who has ever made money to that level? You will go and discover nobody. If you've made that discovery, then you are up against to deal with some foundational issues. Because you are going to be with one that will break through and become the progenitor of a new era. But the thing is, we think foundation is if you don't fight it now, what you don't fight today, your children will suffer from tomorrow. Another history, Abraham. In Genesis 11 and in Genesis chapter 12, the Bible gave us a genealogy that led to Abraham. From the descendant of Shem. Noah blessed Shem, remember. And made him to have authority over his other siblings. But there was a man that was born. His name was Terah. Terah happens to be the father of Abraham. If you read Genesis 11, in that genealogy, you will see that men were given birth at the age of 30, 25, 35, 30, 30-something. 30 but when it was Terah's turn, it was when he was 70 years old. Now he started giving birth to children. Actually, because the word Terah means delay. Hold on. So at 70, when a man should be retiring to die, that's when he's giving birth. And from that day, a foundation was entrenched. Abraham, Terah gave birth to three sons. Naho, Abraham, and Hera. The delay affected all of them. Naho and Abraham, their wives were barren. Haran, who managed to succeed and give birth to Lot, died before his father so the delay kept following them in fact it was by a divine intervention after the fullness of time that Abraham's wife Sarah conceived and bore Isaac in chapter 22 when God now made a covenant with Abraham at Mount Moriah you remember when God said in blessing I will bless thee after that covenant the Bible says a, a news came to Abraham that your brother Nahor's wife has also conceived. I'm just trying to show you, I'm taking you through scripture to show you these things and that they are real. And it looks like there was untimely death on Hiram because he died before his father. Is that true? Well, that death also affected his son, Lot. Lot was very rich because he followed Abraham. But when he separated from Abraham, remember, Abraham now had... That was why God made a covenant with Abraham. It was to erect a new foundation for him. And Lot left Abraham. In fact, he left him as Abram. He didn't leave him as Abraham. The Abram he left was the flesh dimension of Abraham. When Lot went to the city of Sodom, remember what happened to him. He came out of that place a destitute. He lost his wife and he eventually lost his life. 
Can I give you more on foundations? There's another story, the story of Moses and Joshua, men of God in scripture. The Bible says that Moses was a man that was mighty in word and in deed. Moses was a deliverer that God raised to free the children of Israel from Egypt. In Exodus chapter 2, Moses' parents were from the tribe of Levi, a cursed tribe, according to Genesis 49. Remember, Jacob cursed them. He said, Simeon and Levi are brothers of destruction. In their anger, they hamstrung an ox. They did this, this and that, this and that. He said, cursed be their anger. And let them be divided and scattered in Israel. And that thing followed the generations. Here comes an innocent boy born, Moses. Grew up, left Egypt, went to the land of Midian, came back and delivered the children of Israel. He didn't know that his foundations was going to fight him. When they got into the wilderness, anger made him miss the promised land. So Moses was so anointed that the Bible says in Deuteronomy 34 when he died that there was no man that God ever spoke to before or after that time like the way he spoke to Moses. He said he spoke to him face to face as a man who speak to his friends. As anointed and graced as Moses was, he didn't fulfill destiny. What was destiny? Take these people out of Egypt and bring them into the promised land. Did he do it? No. But here is another man, Joshua, who was not anointed. As a matter of fact, the only thing that Joshua had that was spiritual was the spirit of wisdom. And that spirit of wisdom came on him when Moses laid hands on him. Joshua was so not anointed that God told Moses before he died, he said, lay hands on Joshua in the presence of the elders and the children of Israel. He said, and put some of your honor upon him so that the children of Israel will obey him. Joshua had no anointing. Of course, you know, every time Moses entered the temple, the tents to seek the face of God, Joshua was around. He would hang around, hang around the presence of God. But he had no access to what was there. All he had was the sword in his hand. And if you don't believe Joshua was not anointed, that is the reason why when they were fighting against Amalek, if Moses' hands came down, Joshua and the soldiers began to lose. But though Joshua was not anointed, he had a solid foundation. In Leviticus chapter 13, the Bible says Joshua, or Numbers chapter 13 rather, Joshua was from was, was the son of Nun, who was from the tribe of Ephraim. And in Genesis chapter 47, if you read, when, when Jacob blessed the sons of Israel, Genesis 48 rather, if you read verse 16 to 20, Jacob blessed the sons of Israel and the tribe of Ephraim. Ephraim was the younger one. But Jacob made Ephraim the older by blessing. In Genesis 49, Jacob also blessed Joseph again, who was their father. So Joshua came from a blessed tribe. And because of that, even though he was not anointed, he was able to win all his battles. He spoke and the son stands still. Until today, the son has not stood still to any man. He fulfilled his destiny. The Bible says he died a good age. Can I tell you something? You may not be so anointed, but if you deal with your foundation, you will make progress and you may even succeed beyond one who is anointed. There are some pastors in the body of Christ that don't do anything around the miraculous in their ministry. They come and they teach. In fact, you will almost be sleeping when they are teaching. But when you check the congregation they are talking to, thousands of people as though they are talking to themselves. And you see them living in prosperity. Oh God, it's not by what they are saying. No. The main side of ministry is foundations and secrets. Time will fail me. I have so much, so much to give us. How about the lost in Abraham's lineage? No, there was immorality in Abraham's lineage. First of all, I discovered that Abraham was attracted to fair ladies. The Bible says he married Sarah, who was of fair countenance. Isaac married Rebekah, for she was fair to look upon. Jacob loved Rachel. Why? All right. So they had this thing with fair women. And there was a propensity for immorality in the lineage that was not dealt with. So Abraham married Sarah and married her maid, Hagar. 
It was only Isaac that broke that thing. That was why when Isaac married Rebecca, he took her to his mother's tent. Even though that was another foundation that he entered into. Because he slept with her in his mother's tent and his mother was a barren woman. So you now see that in the next chapter, chapter 25, from verse 20, 21 down, Rebecca could not conceive. Isaac married Rebecca at 40 years. She gave birth when he was 60 years. May, may you not arrive late. I'm prophesying to you by the power of the Holy Ghost. Any cycle initiated in your life by the kingdom of darkness that will bring that will make for late arrival, we cancel it this night. We cancel it this night. I project Pataka. I project myself by the Spirit of God into your foundations. Every altar of delay, every cycle of delay, we declare it comes to an end this night in the name of Jesus Christ. Sit down, we're about to pray. Isaac was the only one that broke that gene. So only Rebecca was his wife. When they came to Jacob, Jacob multiplied immorality. He married two sisters and their maid, two maids. And he cursed his first son. Why? Because his first son slept with one of the maids. He didn't end there. Judah continued with the immorality. Slept with his daughter-in-law. How can you be walking on the road and just see a woman covered her face? He said, let me go into you. What kind of immorality is that? It was not his fault. It's in the lineage. I've seen some young people who are wonderful. Some of them are even born again. Some of them are even anointed. Skillful in life. Intelligent. Professional at what they do. But you find a propensity of immorality around them. It looks like they can't stay without doing something around that area. So the young man gets into an office. And after two years, he has slept with three people in that office. And he's not getting married to any of them. Don't blame him. Check his foundation. Maybe he didn't find out that his grandfather married four wives. And I tell people that if you think marriage is an excuse not to commit fornication or adultery, you may be lying, you know. If you think marriage will save you from immorality, that's why the one that happens in marriage, they call it adultery. Adult three. Huh? Not children's crop, adult tree. And because of that thing that Judah did, the tribe of Judah, though they were blessed, their inheritance kept escaping them. Very little was said about that tribe for many years. In fact, in Deuteronomy, one of the laws God gave the children of Israel, He said that no outsider, no stranger, or anyone born out of incest will stand in the congregation of, of my people. That was why when it was time for a king, instead of God to go to Judah, it was written that the scepter shall not depart from Judah. Where did God go to? Benjamin. You know why? There was something in the foundation that kept blocking or give, blocking the access for their original inheritance to find expression. That was why when it was time to anoint David, it had to be with a sacrifice. When it was Saul's turn, he poured oil, somewhere poured oil on him. But when it was David, God said, carry a cow and go and offer sacrifice first. Because this lineage that you are entering into, there is a foundation fighting from ten generations before. And of course, you know David's story. His involvement with women, till Uriah's wife killed a man and married a woman. And you know, he did it so neatly. When the Belen never show, he made her his wife. He wrote a letter, he said, Put the man that carries this letter at the hottest part of the battle and pull out. It was a very neat arrangement. And then he went and invoked foundations. Then what happened? Amnon, his first son, slept with his daughter, Tamar. It will interest you to know that Tamar was actually a namesake to Ju the woman that Judah slept with, Tamar, his, his daughter-in-law. Who gave that lady that name? That's why I look at young couples these days, pray before your wife gives birth. Or pray before you give birth to get a name. 
these days where we have all kinds of names Jasmine Jacinta what again I'm not against that too but the reason for names is that you capture the prophecy of that child or you capture the inheritance of that child and you prophesy it over the child it's not just identity alone if you give birth to a child and you call the child honor, it's a prophecy. It has grown into his future. 25 years later, so his mates will buy cars when they are 40 years. But at 25, he's a millionaire already. I had the story of a young man who they gave him a name in his dialect. They say, world no go greet. That's the meaning of the name. And later in life, everywhere he went to, he was rejected. Then he went somewhere and discovered his name and changed it. And everything began to open up. There's an example like that in the Bible. What of Jabez? First Chronicles chapter 4, 9 to 10. Second, sorry, First Chronicles chapter 2, verse 55, also of Jabez. The Bible says of Jabez in First Chronicles 4, verse 9, that Jabez was more honorable than his brethren, but his mother called his name Jabez. That statement is not complete is not is not correct according to english language because the statement began with his end jabez was more honorable than his brothers that was his later end but he now went back to his beginning he said for his mother called him jabez so it was supposed to be read as thus that his name was called jabez because his mother said this but later on he became more honorable name Eventually, when Jabez dealt with his foundation in First Chronicles chapter 2, verse 55, Jabez became so great and he expanded till a city was named after him. And the families of the scribes who dwelt at where? Jabez. That's why you go pray this night. Too. Are you ready to pray? All right. Let's go back to the lost issue. So Amnon slept with his sister, died. Absalom, his brother, killed him. Absalom took it to another level. He slept with all his father's concubines on the rooftop. So everybody was seeing them. Then Solomon, Solomon now made it a, an international affair. 700 wives and 300 concubines. He was marrying anyhow. It's as though if Solomon just catches eye contact with a lady, that's a wife already. And the Bible says these women led him to idolatry. There are some people that need to check their problem with lust. You have prayed and fasted, it's not working. Check your foundation. It may be a foundation thing you need to deal with. And I'm saying this with all the love in my heart. I'm not here to embarrass us. I came here this night because in my heart it has been bonding, burdened since last Sunday that there are people, if we don't address the issue of foundations, they may never make progress. And I will not join the devil make you look at God as a liar. And that's why you're hearing the truth. Let me stop here. I have several things I could show you. I would have shown you about Reuben and the course on his life. I would have shown you about Esther and Mordecai. Why Haman rose against them. It was not because he hated them. But the spirit in his lineage was the one fighting them. Because in Esther chapter 3, the Bible says that Haman was of the lineage of a man called Agag. Agag was the king of the Amalekites that God told Saul to destroy and kill. Saul allowed him. When you don't destroy or deal with your enemies today, they will become your children's enemies. Some of you have inherited family battles. Some of you have inherited the enemies or the spirits that fought your fathers, your grandfathers. And now you have to deal with them now so that your children can have a quality life. But there's good news before we pray this night. The Bible says that the yoke shall be destroyed. Because of what? Thank God that there is liberty in Christ Jesus. Quickly let me run through how you can access liberty from foundational or from faulty foundations. Number one, you must be born again. Hmm? It's a decision you must make. If any man be in Christ, is a new creature. Let me explain what it means. If any man be in Christ, is a new creature. A creature means he was not a descendant of any other person. A creature means he's the first of its kind. 
that means that he is not connected to any father or to any mother so that a cause can tra be transmitted down the bloodline. That's why your redemption in Christ Jesus, God made you a new creature. You are not traceable to any other person. Just the way he created Adam. Adam was the first. You know, Adam was not cursed. I hope you know. You don't know? I'll prove it to you another day. Adam wasn't cursed. And he did not inherit foundation problem. The people that were cursed was Eve and the serpent. I guess that when God looked at Adam and wanted to curse him, he saw his image. Because Adam was created in the image. <laughs> that is why in Christ Jesus, God did not route you to any human ancestry. Because in Romans 5, 12, where we read, the Bible says, through one man, sin entered. So if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature, a new species. You are not routed to any human ancestry so that any cause can be permitted. That is why the first thing you will do to break free from foundational issues is you must be born again. And then after that, you take your life in your hands. This deliverance is a project. I must deal with it. You see, there may be somebody now listening to me and just say, well, he has a lot, of, a lot to say from the Bible. But I don't believe in that. I'm born again, therefore it has been settled. But I will plead with you to listen to what I'm saying now. So that you don't keep recycling your pain. Because I would want to ask you, that your belief and your conviction that is against this, that is from the word of God. Where has it taken you to in life? You know the word of God is like a university. When you enter a university, there are different faculties. Every of those faculties teach studies that are related to life issues. No faculty can say they are the most important than any other. Is that true? Every faculty needs one another as far as the studies of life on earth is concerned. That's how the word of God is. The revelation of being a new creature in Christ Jesus and the finished work is good. But that's one faculty in the body of truth. This is another truth we must enter. The second thing you do after being born again is that you must engage the ministry of the word. Study the word of God. Find out what, it is, written, what is written concerning you. Find out what is written about a new creature in Christ. What did God achieve for you in redemption? What do you know about what God did for you in redemption? Do you know that because of redemption we have access? The Bible says by him we have access to the Father through one spirit. Do you know that through redemption you have forgiveness of sins? Do you know that through redemption you have deliverance? The Bible says let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Whom he has redeemed from the enemy. What do you know? Do you understand the full import of redemption? Not in these days when Christians are in a hurry. To come to church is a problem. They don't even want to be taught about the ways of God from scripture. Everybody's looking for miracle here and there. And I'm wondering, those who have been looking for the miracle from Genesis till today. What has happened in their life? Why don't you experience the greatest deliverance, which is a transformation of your mind? Understand the full import of what God did for you. There is something about the word of God that you know. God does not need to work again in your life. You can take your life in your own hands. The Bible didn't say that the creature is waiting for the manifestation of children. It's children that are looking for what to receive. The Bible says the creature earnestly awaits the manifestation of who? Sons. I hope I didn't hurt somebody by that. But I'm tired, I'm just I'm tired of this miracle, miracle thing. I believe in the miraculous. I mean, look at all that's been happening in our midst. But I'm just tired of this need driven Christianity. It's a pain and a plague. And of all places in Nigeria, I think the north has to wake up. Because with all due respect, and it's a cry in my heart, the poverty in the north is not only financial, it's also ignorance. Bankruptcy of the knowledge of God. And we don't know that we are the most disadvantaged in all the regions of Nigeria. When I'm talking about northern Nigeria, I'm not talking about only those who are from the north. If you are staying in the north or you were born in the north, you are part of it. 
And all we do is go around looking for miracles here and there. When the greatest deliverance for a believer is transformation. You know the thing with miracles is, imagine somebody now with this, all this that you have heard and you know you need to deal with foundational issues. And the person is wanting a pastor, let me use that word. He wants a pastor to just do like this. Lay his hands and then it is over. You know, the laziness, we don't know how to pray. We don't know how to do anything to involve or engage God. Eventually, even if that works, I hope you know that if you were that individual, you will not understand the secrets in the kingdom that made for that deliverance. And because of that, you are, the, Satan will take advantage of your ignorance and he will come back many years later with the same captivity and you'll be stranded because when they were solving the classwork, you were, you were typing text message, you were whatsapping. So today now is exam and they brought the same question. You don't know how to solve it. I hope you understand what I'm saying. You know those days, some of us, we had friends in school who could do all the assignments. Ladies, say amen. You had better say amen. No? You had better say amen. Some boys use assignments to be able to get girlfriends. So the lady said, this one is my assignment boyfriend. This one is my money boyfriend. This one is my church boyfriend. Who said, hey, I hope you are not among them. I hope you are not on that line too. Y, A, B, C, D, E. Then this one, when I finish with all these ones in university, I will now go and marry this one. This is the one that is my settlement. It's foundation too. If you are doing that one, it's foundation that is fighting you. It's foundation. Serious one. I hope you love me after tonight. Are we ready to pray? My God, I feel an anointing in this place. I feel the power of God so strong. Yokes will break in the next five minutes. So if you didn't do the assignment and the same question appeared in the exam, how are you going to face it? That assignment was 10 marks. This one is 70 marks. Any battle you dodge today, you will face in a greater form in the future. Why don't you fight it now? Engage the ministry of the world. Be taught. Study scripture. Find out the truth. Before you go on any spiritual journey, make sure you gather knowledge. Sit down. And go into the word of God. Let God show you how do I deal with this. And it's nothing more than knowing who God has made you to be in Christ Jesus. And then enforcing that reality. Number three. Engage the place of prayer and fasting. Matthew 17, 21. This kind go ahead not except by prayer and fasting. Isaiah 58 verse 6. Is this not the fast that I've commanded? That you loosen the heavy burdens. That you let the oppressed go free. That you lose the band of wickedness. You undo the heavy burdens. And that you break every yoke. Prayer and fasting is the law enforcement agency of the spirit. What God has written about you has been written. But it doesn't mean it will manifest. It takes a law enforcement agency like prayer. To insist that it come to pass. I hope you know that Satan is an illegal spirit. In his ways is illegal. He know that God has said it and it is written concerning you. But to hell with your it is written. He will keep denying you on it until you enforce and insist in the place of prayer. That was why every time men prayed in scripture, they got results. Those results were the promise of God for them. In the case of Isaac, in Genesis 25, in verse 21, the Bible says, Isaac prayed hard. Message translation. Brothers, put your prayer life on fire because marriage is a good testing ground. I, the husbands, I hope I'm saying the truth. Husbands, am I lying? Okay. Better be on fire now. Stop eating chocolate and pursuing girls. Instead of pursuing three girlfriends, chase one. Use the remaining time that you use for the two. Know God, understand the spirit realm Know how to route yourself from any problem Because there is a test in future And there is a time when Papa's number will be off And I say it with love, it's the truth
most of these things I'm teaching you, I discovered it on my own. Of course, listen to some. But I sat down to do this research, not just as a pastor, but as a man. If I fail in ministry, at least let me not fail in a family. I know where I'm coming from. I know the things I suffered. And I must ensure that I finish the battles so that my children can have it. I told somebody, I said, when my first son, if you tell my first son that I was once poor, he will swear with his life that is not true. It won't happen by just talk. You will have to engage those forces. And then finally, trust the leading of the Spirit to guide you. As you pray and fast, trust the Holy Spirit to guide you. Sometimes in those seasons of travail and prayer, He will give you an instruction. You know, the Bible says, For this cause, many are weak, many are sick, and many sleep. He said, Because they do not discern the body. In the body of Christ, there are several graces. That thing you are praying for is a possibility in, in another person's life. But as you pray and seek the face of God, the Holy Ghost can direct you. Go to so-so person, sow a seed. Or go to so-so person, let them pray for you. Sometimes in your dream, you can even see God will use the face of somebody and come to you. And you wake up from that dream and your life enters a new chapter. It is when you engage the leading of the Spirit that you can access the prophetic which is now the yoke breaker. Are you ready to pray? Stand on your feet. Well, you don't need me to give you a prayer point. You can just start talking to God with all that you have heard. Just talk to God in two minutes. You've heard so much tonight. Let God arise. Let his enemies be scattered. This is that day and time where God wants to bring an end to captivity. Tonight is the night where God wants to visit your foundations. Can you thank him for what you have heard tonight? In Jesus name. We are going to pray two prayer points, two, three prayer points and we are done tonight. Let me give you a story of somebody I know very well. Now this lady had stayed in a foreign country for a long time and um, when she got to that country God began to show her favor things were happening going well for her three years after I've been in that country everything turned upside down to a point where she had no house to stay she would sleep in cars she kept going from one place to another you know what it means to be homeless in another country one day she went with her cousin to visit a place and somebody who knew the cousin was greeting the cousin and the person asked is that your mother even though the cousin was older than her but foundations had stamped their evil and wickedness on her life to a point where physically she was looking older than her age and that blocked her from getting married And somebody in her 50s now, but yet no husband, returned back to where she came from without anything. If you are ready to pray this night, some things will break. See, if it is a strong man in your father's house, if there is one spirit that has been hiding in the shadows, if there is a witch, next week is for witchcraft, but if there is anything or anyone behind your pain, or responsible for these cycles this night thunder will blast somebody say apostle are you bringing thunder into this way to wait psalms 81 verse 7 he said you called upon me and i answered you from the secret place of thunder 
in Revelation chapter 4, he said, Out of the throne proceeded lightnings and thunder. That thunder is not for cinema. That thunder is to scatter the enemies of God. Are you ready to pray this night? He said, Let God arise and let his enemies be scattered. Say after me in the name of Jesus. Oh God, my Father. Oh God, my Father. Tonight. Tonight. Show your mercy. Show your mercy. Upon my life. Upon my life. Upon my family. Upon my family. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and pray. Just 60 seconds. Show your mercy. Show your mercy. Show your mercy. Let your mercy override over evil. Let your mercy override judgment. Let your mercy overcome evil. Let your mercy prevail for me tonight. The covenant of your mercy. The covenant of your mercy. In Jesus name we pray. How many of you have seen people where if you try to help them, your own finances will be tied? How many of you have seen people that you want to help them, you promise that you will do it for them? And all of a sudden, you can't even fulfill that promise again. It's not your fault. It's something from their end that is fighting them. You remember the story of the two disciples Jesus sent to lose the coat. Jesus said, as you lose the coat, if anybody says to you, why are you losing the coat? He said, tell them that the Lord, we are going to invoke the authority of the Lord this night. A coat that no man has sat upon. Guess what? When they went and were losing the coat, it happened as Jesus said. But shockingly, it was the owners of the coat. How can you buy a coat, a donkey, and you will not use it and leave it tied there? If you're not going to use them, allow another person to use. That's how there are forces in some families. They will not buy a car, but they will not allow you to buy a car. They will not prosper, but they will not allow you to prosper. Now somebody wants to help you. They arise and fight that person. The person called you and said, come and meet me next Monday. And between that time and next Monday, two days to Monday, his line is not going through. You drop messages, they are not responding to you. It's not the person. Foundations. Foundations. Can I give you a story before we pray? A few months ago when I went to see God's servant, Apostle Joshua Selman, God had opened the door for me and I knew it was a new season. Because if you are sensitive, you don't meet a man of God and live the same way. Even if he doesn't say anything to you. God told, he told Elijah, go and show yourself to Ahab and I will send rain. The appearance of a man of God in your life is the, is the turn of a new season. If you are sensitive. All of a sudden, when the invitation was given, Satan began to fight. Brothers and sisters, do you know I missed two flights? Two flights. I spent almost 300,000 just to go and come back. Why? Forces. The first one, we were still on our way. We missed it. The second one, I got to the plane. On the roadway, on the tarmac. I was in front of the plane. The pilot closed the door and looked at me and refused to open and flew. This is me, your man of God telling you. Foundations. When I left there, I went to the airport. Some people were doing aluta, shouting everything. In fact, some of my guys who were in the military were calling and trying to... I didn't say anything. I knew where the problem is. I went back home, ate my dinner and slept. In the night, I opened scripture. You know what? They told me that the, air, the plane that was to leave the next day on Sunday was full, filled up. In fact, their website was not opening again. I prayed from 12 midnight to 3 a.m. I went to sleep. Somebody sent me a text by 6 a.m. He says, sir, we've booked your flight. When did the website open? 3 a.m. 
you don't deal with foundations, they will come for you. But this month, this month, eh? This month, this month. Is somebody angry in their spirit? Everything that has been planted in your foundations by the hand of the Most High, we uproot them this night. 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 Say after me, oh God, my Father. Oh God, my Father. Arise. Arise. Visit my foundation. Visit my foundation. Enter my family. Enter my family. Maternal patana. Maternal patana. And every foundational problem. And every foundational problem. Uproot it once and for all. 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 Open your mouth and roar in prayer. Next week we'll do the prophetic by the help of the Holy Ghost. Next week we'll do the prophetic. We'll take time to minister in that dimension. You are going to pray against every power in your ancestry that limits or regulates the progress of the destinies of men. Listen. Listen to my story. There was a year God had spoken to me at the beginning of that year to empty my account. I emptied it was over half a million. And I began to engage the place of prayer. You know, you pray at the beginning of the year to know the mind of God and to, you know, send the word that God gives you over your life into the year. How many of you pray prayers into your future? You will learn it in these two Sundays. That if there is an attack to hit you in September, from here, even if you don't know, you can send prayers like a force to September. And it will evacuate clean everywhere. And when you enter September and the devil owns his switch, thinking that the cycle will happen, it is cancelled. That's why he says he frustrated the devices of the crafty so that their hands cannot perform. After sowing that seed, you think God will move immediately. Ah, one week, two weeks, nothing happened. That third week I began to pray restlessly. Anytime I'm in, I'm in the middle of a situation, I know you, you call Papa, you text Papa, you see Papa and all of that. Who will I call? Anytime I'm in the middle of warfare, I pray round the clock. Round. Round. From night to night. Until it is solved. That night I went to sleep with 80 Naira in my account. And I had a dream. In that dream, three men were discussing. One of them was one of my uncles. And after their discussion, the two of them now spoke to that one. They told him, let's give it to him. I don't know what that means. Let's give it to him. I woke up the next day and saw millions in my account. That was the day that my finances opened up. So there's wealth in the lineage. But something has been fighting. Are you ready to pray this night? 
Who told you God created you to be poor? Some of you come from families. You have done your BSc. But why is it difficult finishing a master's? It's very simple. Maybe you are going to be the first. And so those forces regulating, those regulatory powers. You know in the physical, in the physical we have regulatory agencies. If 100 million enters your account now, nah, EFCC will trace you. Is that true? That's how we have them in the spirit realm. Some of you, you will have dreams in the spirit. And in your dreams, you will see policemen running after you. When police are supposed to protect you. That's because sometimes those people connote demons. Regulatory demons in families. Oh, God will give us understanding. Say after me in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Every regulatory power. Every regulatory power. In my ancestry. In my ancestry. Matana patana. Matana patana. Limiting the success of men. Limiting the success of men. Limiting the advancement of men. Limiting the advancement of men. I can't hear you. Limiting the progress of men. Limiting the progress of men. Be arrested by fire. Be arrested by fire. No. Open your mouth and pray in the name of Jesus.
This is that day of deliverance. This is the time where the sons of God will step into the liberty of the Spirit. In Jesus' name. I want to speak over your life. Next week, if I have time, we'll minister to some people in the prophetic. I want to speak over your life. Some things will be corrected. He says, See, I've set you this day above nations and kingdoms to pull down and to destroy, to tear down and to uproot. How? He said, Because the word is in your mouth. I want to pray for you. I saw a woman that came in with crutches. Is it true? I saw, I saw somebody who came in with crutches. Where is the person? Where? Is she sitting down? Huh? She's standing without a crutch. Tell her to walk. Mama, walk in the name of Jesus. God has healed you. Help her to walk. Walk. The Lord just said that. Without the crutches. Wait, wait, hold on. I want to see her. I want to see her. Let me pray. I want to see her. Can you bring her out so that I can see her? I want to see her. No, just carry her. You don't need to carry her with the chair. Put her outside. Let me see her and pray. I feel an anointing here. Quickly, please. Everything that you have lost will be restored to you today. Some of you are going to break free from ancestral afflictions inexplainable sicknesses that you don't know where they are coming from what's her problem what's wrong with her where's the mic please bishop please go there for me what's wrong with her no no what's wrong with her then you tell me Huh? From her knees to her hips, uh, she can't move. She can't move. She feels like there are irons inside, nails like nails, irons inside. Has she been operated before? No, she has not. How long? Since January, sir. Since January. Yeah. Mommy, look at me. Look at me. Is she married? You, are you married? She's married, yes. Mommy, look at me. Look at me. Look at me. Look at me. Look at me, mommy. Look at me. Forget about anybody around you. Look at me. Jesus is going to heal you right now. Put your two hands on your, your lap. Mommy, put the mic on her mouth. Say after me, Jesus. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Jesus. Say, Jesus. Jesus. Tonight. Tonight. Heal me. You. Set me free. Save me free. So that I will walk. So that I will walk. With my legs. With my legs. Remove it. Father, I speak to her bones like the bones of Ezekiel. Let bones come to its bone now. Life in those two legs right now. Father, thank you for an instant miracle that your name will be glorified. In the name of Jesus. Does she feel pain? Does she feel pain? No, she does not feel pain. Help her on her feet. Help okay, her on her feet. Mama, look at me. Jesus said, walk. Walk. Take the step and he will complete it. Walk. Help her to walk. 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 That's the power of God. God is perfecting it. God is perfecting it. Walk. I want to pray against 
afflictions that are in the bloodline because that's what I'm seeing. Are you ready? Stretch your two hands towards me. Father, in the name of Jesus, every affliction that is paternal or maternal, afflictions that are in the bloodline, mysterious in their occurrences, today it comes to an end now. We command those afflictions to go now. We arrest the spirit of affliction now. Be healed in the name of Jesus. I'm about to pray for you now. Where is she? How does she feel now? Ask her how she feels. How is, how is it like now? Huh? Heavy. She'll need to exercise that leg. Alright? You know what will happen? Um, man of God, please come. Protocols, leave her. I want you, David, go. Go and help her to walk. As she's walking, be speaking life into her. Because that's the process of a miracle. That's how it happens. Okay? The protocols, you can leave her. Lift your hands. I want to pray for you. The Bible says, Now thanks be to God, who always makes us triumph. In the name of Jesus Christ, we appear by the Spirit in your foundation. And everything that God has not planted, everything that does not reconcile with your nature in Christ Jesus, let the hand of God uproot them now. Let the hand of God uproot them now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Every yoke, every obstacle, every challenge, every, every obstruction, every limitation, every bondage, every weight, every cause, every covenant that has been existing because of the powers of darkness, with or without your knowledge, by the power of the blood of Jesus, we delete those covenants now. We command those things to be gone now. In the name of Jesus Christ. I come representing a kingdom and a priesthood and by the power of the Most High he that died and rose from the dead and who has all authority and power in heaven on earth and under the earth the one before whom all, all creatures will flee I stand in the name of Jesus I challenge every demonic strong man in your family whether physical or spiritual I cause those strong men now and I release the judgment of God upon them now. Let the sword of the Lord go forth into your family and slay on every side any strong man that is of the evil one. In the name of Jesus Christ. Father, tonight let the angel of vengeance be released. Visit their families. Visit their bloodlines. Let there be victory. And in the name of Jesus Christ, I speak over your life in this July. This is the seventh month. I declare that in this month you will prevail. Over every circumstance. Over every situation. And by the power of prophecy, I shift you into your season of rest. I shift you into your season of rest. I declare that you will experience all round rest in the name of Jesus. Can I pray for your finances? Every cycle that has been programmed around your finances, whether it is transgenerational or it's happening in your time, every spirit that has stolen and is sitting on the financial destinies of your life and those in your bloodline i stand by the melchizedek priesthood and i demand release them now release them now in the name of jesus whatever was stolen from you i declare restore 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 restore, restore. 
in the name of Jesus. Your stolen treasures are restored. Your wealth has been restored. Your financial destiny is restored. Some of your job opportunities has been stolen from you. Some of you all kinds of opportunities. Tonight I declare restore. 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 In the name of Jesus. Can I pray the favor of God upon your life? The Bible says in S chapter 2 verse 9. That Esther found favor in the sight of the one that had the custodian of the of the women. Give her a chance so you can sit down. Later you exercise her legs. God is perfecting her healing. Esther chapter 2 verse 9. The Bible says Esther found favor. Let her sit on my chair. Bring her there. Put that scripture. I want to pray something over your life. Now last week I made a declaration by the spirit of God. I said I place a seal on your forehead. That is called acceptance. You heard the testimonies here today. No, no application, interview, and automatic employment. The Bible says, Now the young woman pleased him, and she obtained his favor. So he readily, give us in King James, please. I think King James used the word speedily. He speedily gave her things for her purification. It is not just enough for the resources you are believing God for to come to you, but it must come to you on time. It must come to you speedily. If you need to buy a car or a property tomorrow and the money comes on Wednesday when the opportunity has gone, I hope you know that is delayed. I want to pray for you in the name of Jesus. By the favor of God, everything that God has designed to enter into your life, I force them to arrive on time. I force them to arrive on time. I force them to arrive on time. In the name of Jesus. I speak the favor of God over your life. I declare acceptance on every side. I'm, I'm praying it again over you. Acceptance on every side. In the name of Jesus Christ. I pray for your helpers wherever they are. Help us in business, in ministry. Help us of your destiny. Help us of your assignment. Help us of your career. Wherever they are. North, east, west or south. By the hand of the Spirit of God, I force them to gravitate into your life now. I force them into your life this season. Listen, the Bible says, strangers shall stand and feed your flock. I pray for you that in this season, you will receive the help of strangers. Help that will blow your mind. Receive it in the name of Jesus. And finally, I pray for your spiritual life. I declare that this month you will accelerate. You will enjoy what true rest really is. Every area you have struggled with or in, the grace of God is being multiplied to you. And before the end of these two Sundays, may you be singing a new song. Some of you will return back with your testimonies next Sunday. And the name of God be glorified in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. While we are all standing, no movement everywhere, please. I want to give an opportunity quickly for those who want to surrender their heart to Jesus. I said that the first step for, to break free from found, faulty foundations is that you are born again. You have to make that decision. Either you want to surrender your life afresh or you have heard the word of God and your spirit has convicted you that you need to rededicate your life back to God. You need to be restored in fellowship again with God. Whether you are outside or inside, I want to give you just 10 seconds. I want you to walk to the front quickly and I will pray for you. Walk as quick as you can as though there is fire where you are coming from and you are running to escape it. Without this, all that has happened today will make no meaning in your life. It is when you are saved that you can experience the liberty of God. Ten seconds, if you are here, you want to say yes to Jesus, or you want to rededicate your life, please walk to the front quickly. If there are, let's celebrate them. Quickly. God bless you. 
Pneumatech, if you increase your applause, I believe they will, they will come faster. Surrender to Jesus today and experience the freedom that comes with being in Christ. Keep clapping, they are coming. If the Spirit of God is convicting your heart and you need to join them out outside, please do that quickly. Hallelujah. Stretch your hands and pray towards this one. And if you need to join him, quickly join him. You in front, I want you to put your right hand on your chest. Repeat after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I come to you today. I believe that you died and rose again for my salvation. Today, I receive you into my heart. And I confess you as my Lord and Savior in Jesus name now keep your right hand on your chest father I pray for this one in the name of Jesus and by the authority of your word we declare that his sins are forgiven we declare that he is born again I ask that your spirit will fill him right now and in the name of Jesus I cause every faulty foundation in his roots the operation of demon spirits that are not from God I cause them right now every covenant that he has entered into or that implies in his life knowingly or knowingly we break it by the blood of jesus we declare him saved and delivered and he will serve you all the days of his life in jesus name god bless you